YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel, bringing you another very special and important report, housing crisis. And yes, I would like to be doing these videos outside, but it's rainy, rainy, rainy. It is not cold, but it's just rainy. And I want to send a special shout out to my man, uh, Mario Ducettis. Uh, Mario's got a, he's known as a Lost Canuck. He has a channel. He's out in the East Coast in Ontario, in Barrie, Ontario. And he's surveying and watching what's happening in on the East Coast of Canada there. What's happening in cities like Toronto, Hamilton, Barrie, Ontario, all the way up to Ottawa and kind of giving his little input on what's going on with laws they're passing, what's happening to pensioners, what's happening to things. I'm going to leave a link below to his channel. I really recommend that you guys um, send him links. Uh, if you are in the East Coast, um, send him links um, in the comments below on his channel just so that he can get a little bit of uh, in touch with some of his subscribers. Uh, there's not a lot of people doing the housing crisis, uh, not a lot of people talking about the housing crisis. It's almost like it's not happening. Anyways, I really want you guys to subscribe to his channel, take a look at some of his videos. I do post some of them on my trends in the housing market on my carousel videos. Like if you go to my carousel videos, you'll see his videos there. Now I got a beautiful article here that's screaming and I'm going to read it. It's out in Toronto where my man Mario is. And I want you to, I want you guys to listen to this and pay close attention because this happened here in Vancouver and we have firsthand knowledge of what's going on here with this law. It's by Rob Carrick, a foreign buyer's housing tax in Toronto. Bring it on and fast. It's by the Globe and Mail. It's from March 10, which was my birthday. Bring it up. Bring on the foreign buyer's tax on Toronto housing. Do it fast. Monday is not soon. Monday is the 12th. So Monday is the 13th. I'm sorry. So they want it fast, eh? The Toronto market must be tamed because it's turning into a lab laboratory experiment on how obsessional thinking about particular kind of financial asset can wrap up finances of individuals and governments. The more Toronto houses soar in value, the more vulnerable all these these parties are to an ugly correction. Oh yeah, if you think there's not going to be a correction, you are thinking wrong, my friends. The foreign buyer's tax has helped to settle a frantic Vancouver market, and there's no reason to think it would would not help slow Toronto as well. We want to pump the brakes on the housing through a series of measures. If required, bringing the market to a screaming halt would just be as bad as letting, letting it soar than crash. A taste of Toronto madness. Sales were up 5.7% in February on a year-over-year -year basis, while the average price soared 27.7% to 875983 What economic fundamentals have changed so dramatically that house values should rise that much in 12 months? Did the economy surge ahead? Did inflation jump? Has there been serious increase in full-time work and big pay increases? Did interest rates plunge to make mortgages more affordable? Yeah, are interest rates negative, negatives right now? No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. What's driving the market is mostly a mix of psychological and uh, psychology and adrenaline. To start with, a few people are listing their houses for sale because everything else on the market is expensive, too. This is the trapped wealth phenomena described by Recent, uh, recently by Bank of Montreal Chief Economist Doug Porter. The only way to unlock the wealth in your home in Toronto is to drastically downsize or buy a place in Kupakasin. No, you don't have to go Kupakasin, my friends. You can go to Florida. You go to Old Cala, Florida. You can buy a house for 120, 130 grand. Three bedroom with a pool. You could go to Arizona. You could get a two bedroom condo for like $70,000 with a pool downstairs and a gym. You don't have to, they don't have to make up places like this to make it seem like, like uh, the cheaper, the cheap, only cheap places are, are, are outside of North America. No, you could go to, you could go to uh, parts of Mississippi. You could go parts of Georgia, south of Macon, Georgia. There's beautiful homes there. Huge plantations selling for around $200,000. So you don't have to say you have to downsize or buy a place in Capasinga, okay? Let's continue here. Scarcity of homes for sale in Toronto has driven up prices. What are you talking about? There's 100,000 empty homes. 
which in turn draws people into buying. They figure they must strike now or risk never being able to buy a first-time home. Once again, it's targeting the working poor, first-time home buyers. Uh, the first-time home move up or, or to something bigger. This is why they have bidding wars on the grim little shacks in the city. It's all about F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. Buddies, you're not missing out. Believe me. Realtors don't want foreign buyers tax. They prefer politicians to instead address what they see as supply problem and caused by regulations that restrict construction of new houses. Condos are as thick as grass in Toronto. A lawn, uh, a lawn of glass and steel. New housing projects are scarcer than this imbalance that needs attention because a lot of buyers prefer houses over condos. But that's a medium to long-term fix for housing. A fo Once again, there's 100,000 empty homes. A foreign buyer's tax is much quicker acting, so let's get in on it. Don't be de deteriorated deteriorate by data from the Toronto Real Estate Board inciting that just under 5% of uh, residential real estate transactions last year involved foreign buyers, and that more than half were buying homes for themselves so members of their and or members of their family. The modest size of the contingency of foreign speculators argue for a tax, not against. If TREBS numbers are accurate, a tax would slow the market modestly rather than crushing it, bloated to bursting as they are. House prices need delicate handling. So once again, the reason why I left two, two and a half hours out of my city and moved to a cowboy town, which is really beautiful here, and it's five degrees warmer right across the board than Vancouver, three to five degrees warmer every day. Go look it up, March 11, go forward, and, and, and go forward, 2017, look forward. We're five degrees warmer right across the board with, against, uh, with Vancouver. So not only that is, I, I bought a house for 260 and it's worth 260. The house is 11, you can make it an 11 bedroom if you really wanted to. But I'm only using five as, as bedrooms, then I have a gym, then I have other rooms on a 0.9 acre of our land. Follow my series below on my channel called um, Living the Dream. My series starts off with me talking about buying the house, and then it goes on to me buying the house, and it goes on to me showing the house and the upgrades I've been doing to my house. And I've never been happier leaving a big city. The reason is that big swaths of the country are mortgaged to residential real estate. Individuals have massive amounts on their wealth tied up in their homes. Governments and various levels have come to rely on tax revenue generated by housing sector and the entire economy depends heavily on spending related to housing. How come the economy doesn't depend on building cars, exporting, production, fabrication? We got the minerals here. Why can't we be fabricating bikes? Why can't we be fabricating watches? Why can't we have a huge uh, gold industry? Why does it have to be on housing? We need a healthy housing sector to sustain all who de depend on... Why are you depending on housing? Why is housing become a commodity? This is coming from a guy that has no education. What we have in Toronto is dysfunction. Even agents are struggling to cope. The ones who have houses to sell are laughing. But re representing buyers these days is brutal because there's so little to buy and so much competition to snap up the homes What's, uh, that do go on the market. People who own a house in Toronto are boxed in by high prices on anything else they'd like to buy. Those who want to buy a first-time home in the city are increasingly being priced out of the market. Even if they look in cities outside Toronto and governments have developed an alarming dependency on tax revenues from housing. We need to stabilize the housing sector starting now. A foreign buyer's tax is a good place to start the process. So it happened here in the Vancouver. We put the, the buyer's tax sometime last year. I think it was in June or May of last year of, 20, of 2016. And the housing, the housing sales almost went to a complete screeching halt. Completely to a halt. But everyone was saying, stop blaming the foreign investors. It's not them. Okay, they put the tax on. It's not them. Okay, it's not going to bother them if, if, if it's not them, right? You see what I'm saying? I'm not here to pick, point fingers, um, uh, create uh, debates that are not there to create. I'm here to say, 
stop depending on housing and revenue of taxes from houses to maintain an economy. It doesn't work like that. It can't work like that. Housing markets are supposed to crash just like markets. Once you inflate it with steroids and pump it up with juice, it gets worse. Believe me, it gets worse. You cannot depend on housing to maintain an economy, okay? It's more crazy than having a country like, like I'll give you an example and I'm not picking on Venezuela that only depended in Angola too, only depended on oil for revenues, only, 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 only. And look where they are. They, they have Venezuela, there was rumors of people eating dogs and, and people uh, uh, um, ransacking supermarkets because, and the store shelves empty because they couldn't, there was no food. They had money, there was no food to buy because everything was tied into oil and oil took a gigantic dip. You, if you remember from 2000 and, uh, 2016, 2015, 2016-ish, when oil started taking a huge dive. Anyways, economies cannot be based on housing only. Economies need to be based off resources, needs to be based off uh, different sectors of the market. It cannot be dependent on housing. And then before you know it, they're going to start saying, oh, student loans are, are very important because they help our economy because they do. I don't know, guys. I don't know what to, I don't even know what to say to this. I want to know what you guys think. So the government is, is going to start repairing the housing market. You, you can't repair it. You got to let it crash. Then this way, the province might be forced to get into more logging, more farming, agriculture, creating more jobs, more people paying taxes from their wages to help sustain a proper economy instead of using houses. I don't know anything. Comment below. Let me know what you think on this topic. I would love to hear your, uh, your feedback on this. Thanks for watching and have a good one.